Hey guys, Oliver here. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create the best LEGO Star Wars action shots using Adobe Photoshop and take something like this and turn it into this. First off, I'm going to give a quick overview of my process and the layers slash adjustments I used for those of you who are more experienced with Photoshop, but for those of you who have little to no experience, if you skip ahead to this time right here, I'm going to be giving a step-by-step -step tutorial on exactly what I did. Alright, so we have a couple main elements that I am going to be adding in. First off, we have this sort of large dirt dust explosion that maybe isn't the best for this image, but I added it nevertheless on the left side. Um, I obviously turned down the opacity and gave it an appropriate blur that not only made it feel like it was in place, but also hid my erase marks when I erased the parts that were covering up Rex. And then we added just some flying dirt particles that I dragged in from here just to sort of give it that effect of dirt flying around from an explosion. And then we have these blaster bolts that I created out of these sort of lens brushes and then I painted in these bolt parts. Next we have this floating dust and dirt that really sort of sells the effect that I added in. Um, obviously I played around with the blur and the um, opacity, especially around Rex's helmet and his body to really make sure he pops and stands out a bit from the background and isn't completely covered in dust. And then lastly we have this explosion that's happening behind these crates. Alright, so if you don't need to watch the step-by-step -step tutorial, you can skip ahead to this time right here to see the adjustments I made in Lightroom. Alright, so for those of you that want more of a guided walkthrough, this part's for you. Uh, unfortunately, the first time that I uh, created this, I didn't screen record it, so I'm going to have to do this once again. But, um, here we go. So, first off, we're going to add this sort of uh, dust cloud explosion sort of thing um, into the left side of the image. Um, I'm just going to drag it in. And I'm going to adjust the size so that it's a lot bigger. Alright, so I like the left side of the image, uh, but I don't really like what's going on over here. So I'm going to flip it horizontally um, just to, I guess, just to get that. So this is the position I settled on, and now I'm just going to erase the section that's obviously covering up Rex and a bit down here. Um, I'm just going to go to my eraser brush right over here. And I'm going to use something a little bit bigger for now. Um, opacity at about 100 and the flow at about uh, 40. Um, one important thing that I always like to do is I like to turn down the opacity of the layer that I'm erasing so that I can see um, sort of which parts are overlapping with Rex and which aren't overlapping with Rex. Uh, this part is a bit tedious but it's worth it for getting that sort of clean finish. I'm just going to start on the edges uh, with a smaller brush to get it more refined and right up um, right up against the edge. But I'm going to come in later with a, with a larger brush to get the middle part. Alright, so I finished tracing the outside. I'm just going to turn the opacity back up to 100% just to make sure. Uh, but now I'm going to go back in with a much larger brush just to get the inside portion. Alright, so we finished erasing and it looks okay, but one of the most important parts to really selling the effect and not making it look too harsh, making it feel appropriate, is that blur. So we're going to go up to filter. You probably can't see it, but it's the filter tab at the top. Um, go to blur and down to Gaussian blur or Gaussian blur. I'm not really sure how you say it. And we're just going to find something that feels appropriate. Um, considering the positioning from him and what things are in focus and what things aren't in focus in the original image. I'd say around 4 looks pretty solid. Um, but it still looks a bit wonky around here so what we're going to do is add a layer mask right there. We're going to go to this, um, this gradient tool 
we're gonna click on it make sure that you have the foreground to background i think that's what it called I'm, i messed with my settings right here but you should be able to f figure it out it should be one of the first ones um, if not you can pretty much find any tutorial on it uh, on youtube and we're just gonna make sure we're on that layer and we're gonna drag up like that just so it's sort of fading away and lastly we're just gonna turn the opacity down a little bit as the dust cloud is a bit too thick and a bit too opaque um, so we want it to be a little bit more transparent all right so now that that's done uh, our next layer is just gonna be some floating I guess flying dirt particles that I downloaded I'm fast forwarding over this next segment so the video doesn't get too long but I basically just positioned these flying dirt specks around. Uh, I erased some of the dirt here and there to thin it out in certain sections, especially around Rex's helmet uh, and then I just added a bit of motion blur. Alright so we're gonna, just like the previous two layers, we're gonna drag this onto our canvas, onto what we're working with. What I'm going for is an explosion behind these crates. Um, just to add, I guess, another level of, I guess, explosive particles. We're going to do something very similar to what we did with um, that back cloud layer. Uh, we're just going to erase the portion that is covering these crates and maybe a little bit that's covering his, his hand, or actually all of the part that's covering his um, blaster and his hand because this is in the background. And yeah, I'll speed this up. Alright, and so now we just have our final layer. We're going to go down to our layer blend mode and we're going to go down to screen. And you can see it already looks a whole lot better because obviously all the black part is gone. Uh, we're going to again add another layer mask, go to our uh, gradient tool and drag up again to make it blend in like I've said before. And then we're going to erase a bit of it around Rex's face to really make him pop and stand out from the background. Uh, so we're going to go back to our layer at hand, go to our erase tool, going to turn the opacity way down. So I really like the way that looks. Now we just have one final touch that we're going to add in and that is our blaster bolts that are coming out from here. First things first, make sure we're on a different layer as when we manipulate that layer we don't want to be manipulating stuff that's on layer 3 or any other layer. Uh, so we have a clean layer. Uh, first off, we're going to use these lens flare brushes that I downloaded um, online for free. If you basically just search up uh, free lens flare Photoshop brushes, you should find them or a better one, honestly. Alright, so now we're going to go for the blaster bolts. This part is a bit tedious. I do it a very specific way. Um, you can really simplify it if you want. Um, I'm going to break down both ways for you. Um, you're just going to want to go for a general soft brush, or sorry, a, a hard brush, not a soft brush. If you want to do a soft brush, I guess you can. We're going to click once and add a small circle at the center of the flare right here. And then we're going to extend out with our cursor and then click again but this time hold shift before we click and it should um, extend out a line that connects the two dots. What some people might do which isn't actually a bad thing is they're going to go to the layer and add an outer glow and then just um, blur that layer um, and that'll be their blaster bolt which I think works fine and there's totally nothing wrong with that but what we're going to do is duplicate this layer three times and add an increasingly greater blur to each layer. Uh, for our first layer we're going to add a blur of 4, our second layer 25, and our last layer a blur of 40. And that'll give that nice gradual um, blur effect um, that really looks like a laser bolt. We're going to merge all those three layers together and then we're just going to play around with the perspective a little bit just to make it feel appropriate. Once that's done, we're going to repeat that same process and create our second laser bolt. Now in my opinion, one of the most important parts of these type of action shots where you have blaster bolts that are in midair is adding an appropriate motion blur. We're going to crank that up and you can see it around this area. We're going to go down here and hit solid color. We're going to go to black. 
and we're going to drag that below and look at what we have here but first we have to merge the layers gonna go down to merge layers normal and screen all right and it looks the same right no change but now when i hit command m i can adjust the colors or i can go to command u and adjust like the hue and saturation personally i like to do the curves um, it's a bit more advanced and honestly i don't even know what i'm doing but if you go to the different types of curves i guess you can adjust the color you know what that looks fine you can always play around with it and also this curve is really important too for adjusting just how bright or i don't know uh, you can just experiment that's my advice this is looking solid. So we're gonna throw this into Adobe Lightroom and you guys are gonna catch up with the people that skip this portion and we're gonna sort of add some final touches. And yeah, thanks for watching. Alrighty, so now we're in Lightroom. This is the final image I came up with. Played around with four main elements right here, the contrast, highlight, shadows, and temperature. Contrast and shadows is something I almost always do to make the image really pop and feel realistic. The highlights I brought down just a bit because um, it didn't really make sense for Rex's armor to be sort of bright and shiny in this gritty image I've created and it was a bit too bright even though I weathered the figure and so I brought down the highlights uh, to 21 right there and then raised the temperature just to give it a bit of a warm color. Um, maybe not as much as a planet like Geonosis but I was sort of headed in that direction and then again something that I almost always do is a bit of clarity on the helmet to give it that sharp and detailed look. Alrighty, thanks so much for watching. I hope this helped and I'll see you in the next video.